Okay, hello everybody. My name is Rowan Sanderson. I am the CNO, Chief Nutritional Officer, and I have the luxury of inter interviewing our very own Mark Scott, CEO and co-founder today. We're going to talk about Senior Dog. Now, it's been a bit of a topic and a passion for all of us, and we've been putting a big focus on this over the last couple of weeks. Why? Looking after senior dogs was one of the fundamental reasons that Mark and Tony set up the company. Mark has a senior dog, which is now thriving. And we thought we'd talk you through some of the secrets that he's been using um, and just talk you around a bit of the backstory about why we're all so passionate about looking after dogs of all ages. So, Mark, welcome. Over to you. Thank you, Rowan. Appreciate that. Um, it's good to see you getting a bit of tan there in Espana. Thank you, Mark. I just not washed. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's uh, the story was uh, Trin, who's now fifteen and a half. Um, her brother died just over the age of ten after having cancer, and um, I think having fed the, my dogs all the way up to the age of ten, kibble, hadn't really looked into it in, in much depth, and not really paying attention to the ingredients going in that, it suddenly struck me that you know, more of dying at 10 is quite, a, it's a very young age. And at the same time, Tony, um, who's my pal on the corner, he had two dogs, both of them under 10, both got cancer. So I'm like, that's four dogs, three of them getting cancer. And I'm like, this is, this is, this is crazy. So after looking into that, that's how we came up. The, the long story short is with Bella and Duke and getting amazing people like yourself, Rowan and all that on board and vets and, and, and Wendy and, the Brendans and the Knicks of the world all involved in helping us produce the best possible food that we can, which was natural. Um, so part of that journey was a really, 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 and we, we chatted about this, is, it was to, to develop a food that's great for senior dogs. Um, we, and we came up with, or I should say, you came up with the, uh, the super enriched range, the superfood enriched range. Um, and we wanted to create a range of food that, uh, was anti-inflammatory because yeah. um, one of the things I've done and I did a little post at the start of this month is I've uh, been eating like a dog um, all the way up to June and I managed to put a hefty up to 15 stone which I've not been that way for a long time and I wanted to see what impact it had on my own body and the amount of inflammation around my waist my chest my belly was phenomenal just from eating processed foods like breads, pasta, stuff that I wouldn't normally eat a lot of, and other processed foods. And even though I was eating, and I don't know what the human equivalent to FEDIAF is, Rowan, do you know what it is? is well, it, is I guess it'd be the FDA. The FDA. So, um, so it's, it's whatever you the recommend your daily in, intake for a human. Oh, oh my goodness, that incredible food pyramid yeah and all that stuff anyway so i followed all the nutrients i took you know I, I, in this case i actually took athletic greens um so i was i was mimicking what a lot of vets tell us to do with our dogs which is hey feed your dog a load of processed food because it's got the vitamins and the minerals the market nature the, the micronutrients and all that kind of stuff and what we were seeing in in dogs is this big inflammation now my understanding, Rowan, is that if your body's in chronic inflammation for a long time, it does things to the body. And when I think about Trin, she was 10 when I moved her onto Raw. She's now 15 and a half. When she was 10, she was finding it difficult to get off the floor. It looked like she had arthritis. She's 15 and a half, five and a half years later, and she can get off the ground, not a problem at all. Actually, she can run around in the park. Uh, and it's amazing that people go, you know, how old is your dog? And when I say she's 15 and a half, I go, wow. I mean, she's deaf. She's blind. You know, well, semi, semi deaf, semi blind, uh, an age thing. And I'm looking at ways of how can we improve that. But things that I think I wish I hadn't done and I didn't know was one, I, I would never have fed a kibble um, all, her whole life. I wouldn't have done things like throwing a ball all the time, which she's a border collie and she was loving it because more of her brother who died young, you know, I just realized how much 
pressure I was putting on their bones, running backwards and forwards, and he would roll over to catch the ball and just, you know, hurt himself. Uh, and and sticks, you know, once they start chewing sticks and the splinters in their mouth and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, other things I wouldn't have done is probably um, uh, uh, spaying training at such a young age, you know. So these are things you don't know about until you, until you get older. So that's the uh, the journey. But Trin today at fifteen and a half, um, she's just she's just amazing for what, what she is. Well, isn't she? she is. And only uh, last summer, I had the luxury of taking Trin and Kismet for a walk with your lovely lady wife. And yeah, I could see Trin definitely chasing Kismet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. So, in fact, it's it's interesting you mention all of this because ultimately, uh, that's just as I was getting to know you guys, and I met you the the probably the first time, and you were doing everything you possibly could to look after your dogs, and you were looking after Morph, and Sadie was kind of biohacking and looking at mushroom complexes and C sixty, and in some ways, many of those lessons were the foundation for superfood and rich range and how we can basically combat the effects of aging over exercise everyday living pollution people often forget that you know your dog gets walked at exhaust pipe level and if you're going to be ex exposed to all of this exhaust fumes and walking on a road uh, and Exhaust fumes often stay quite low and the dog's walking through them. And really the superfood en enriched was a collaborative effort of us all sitting down and brainstorming and thinking, wow, I, I, what if we did this? And what if we added this in? And some of it, and I always like to, I always like to define it and say, yeah, it's perfected by evolution and backed by science. And what do I mean by that is, you know, we feed the dog exactly as evolution intends. And then we get some science-backed interventions, like for instance, the spirulina mark, which we know is one of nature's most potent antioxidants to actually combat those everyday processes, everyday oxidants or reactive oxygen species to look after Trin. And Trin, I remember seeing her, her, her hair is totally different from when I first met her, like totally different. Yeah, it's so soft, it's just thick, it's just, I might try rubbing some on my own head uh, and <laughs> see if it has any benefits <laughs> for me. So, yeah. I, yeah We're going to put you on superfood and rich. We'll see I, what I, you do with your beard. No, absolutely, yes. This is the lockdown beard. So I think, yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it's really encouraging to see Trin there. And then I'm just thinking, you know, the more dogs we can get on earlier in their the journey of their life, they're just not going to have many of the problems that older dogs can, can see or can see can, or having and we can see this you know um across the board if you, you speak to vets and the chronic diseases um ultimately ruin i mean how much of it's coming from food how much is it coming from uh environment have you have you ever thought about that from your, your well, side it's funny i was having this conversation because i was interviewing dr brendan clark only this morning who's the president of the rfvs brendan's a great friend to pet health and he's very forward thinking and and frankly i don't think there is a stat we both agree on this that it totally depends for people who live in you know inner cities it might be um it might be more environment uh if you've been subjected to a lot of pharmaceutical drugs it could be that but what we both agree on wholeheartedly and very passionately is that diet is probably one of the biggest if not the biggest components in virtually everything because it's the building block of every yeah. single dog cell whether it's your dog's heart your dog's brain whether it's the joints the repair having those full spectrum amino acids you know for trin to be able to repair a joint as opposed to just some powders out of a bag in a factory yeah. it's it's totally different well if, if if the fur is telling you what's happening on the outside you can imagine what's happening on the inside it, you know that is a really really good point um i think obvious things for, for people when they're looking at the dogs is obviously your your pet and you are the professor of this 
uh, of dog poos. That's a great, <laughs> that's such a great indicator, as you rightly point out. You know, if there's something wrong with the digestion, there's something wrong with the way the dog is absorbing or reacting to the food. Um, and on that point, just so we relate it, because we often relate it, you know, to dogs, but if you relate it back to the human world, I can tell when I've been eating a bad diet, you know, in the toilet. <laughs> you, you, we all can. I know no one really talks about it, but it's, tr it's, it, it's, it's true. You can totally see the difference. And I always talk, comment about jobbies and processed food jobbies and how you can smell them from half a mile away and how they last there for like, you know, three decades before decaying, you know. <laughs> but there's a reason that happens is because the, the stuff that's going through it, it's just doing stuff to the body. Um, totally. You know, it's, and it's, you know, if you look in nature and you look at the stools in nature, I don't walk past a sheep poo going, that's really bogging. You know, I just, you just, it doesn't stink. You know, you just don't get that. You take it if home and you, put it through your jewellery maker. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm warping. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, you don't, you don't, you don't get this out in nature. So why do we think it's all right to happen in the domestic world? And that's. And I think a lot of it's, uh, and I feel responsible along, I know you do, is education, education. We can tell people about it. And often the questions are more important than the answers because we don't always necessarily have the answers right now. But we've got to understand that when we see, see dogs overweight, when we see dogs with chronic diseases and massively growing, we've got to go, well, what is the one thing they have in common? Now, if they say raw feeding is only 10% of the market, and I don't know that for sure, that was the last stat I heard, that means that potentially 90% of dogs in the UK are on some sort of processed food. Right. Well, this is a great stat, and I'm just going to jump in for a second because interviewing Dr. Brandon, he said to me that he envisages that currently 80% of the dogs in the UK are obese. And he went through, I specifically... 80%. Wow. 80%. Now, he did a really... I, I've heard of this before, you know, the scale of the body composition scale of zero to five. I'd never seen the way he's explained it before. He said, if you just feel your dog's ribs from about a third of the way down its chest cavity, you should be able to feel the ribs almost like the bones on the back of your hand. Okay. So that's somewhere that puts the dog's body composition, if you were working zero to five, zero being very, very underweight, five being just, overweight. Just to understand, as long as your hand is in between zero to five? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you've got five fingers. Okay. Uh, so uh, somewhere there, um, it, it'll be about maybe a two or a three. If you actually make a fist and run your fingers over your knuckles, that's and you can feel your dog's ribs like that. That's a one, a two or a one. That's very underweight. And basically, if you feel the bones of your hands like this, and you, that's how your dog's ribs feel, then actually there's too much fat there, and they're probably a high four or a five. It's a really easy thumb or hand rule uh, on how to ascertain your dog's. Uh, body composition, but so many people come to raw. I think it's virtually impossible to see a raw fed dog be overweight, and everybody assumes that the dog is, oh wow, my dog's lost loads of weight. It's like, no, that's a working dog. That's how a Labrador should look. I mean, look at yeah. Tony's Gus. What a, what yeah. a handsome beast that is. It's solid, yeah, Gus, solid. not Tony, both. Yeah. We'll give them both. <laughs> yeah, but they're solid, they're absolutely solid. And you see it, you see, you see it, um, dogs that have been on raw you just don't see the information that you do in other dogs. So I think it, coming back to the whole role of the senior dog is there's often, I think you brought the, a, a wonderful terminology. We often talk about it being health span is one side and lifespan. Yeah. And we want, we want them both to meet. There's no yep. point being living long on medication and not having much of a life, you know? Um, so it's important that uh, we can try and get those two to meet. I mean, I guess the lifespan would not go into Vegas all the time and having an amazing life, and it's really I'm surprised short, you know? at what your dog does when you go out <laughs> on a date night. That's like, where's but, that bit of pizza from? Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah, that kebab in the mouth? The well, I always like to look at it as just put more life into their years. 
And mm. it's, if we zoom out for a minute and we think, okay, what's all of these great guides on behavior and what we're doing here with all of this food is actually to make your pet happy. We know that dogs feel happiness. It's yeah. not about to pursue health for health's sake or behavior to behavior's sake. It's so that that companion, which is part of your family, is happier. And we know that dogs, which are healthier, they can run for longer, they can play for longer, they feel better. We know for sure that they're happier. Well, interesting. There's another point that I wanted to bring up that you just reminded me. So Trin, um, before I fed her raw, she's a border collie she used to nip people as they came into the house and heard them like she would nip ankles and stuff one of the things i definitely saw a difference was she stopped doing that on raw it was almost like she just calmed down she was a lot more placid she wasn't so hyper 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 and getting stressed by it. even now other dogs she's not she's not friendly to other dogs and she won't bother going but if another dog comes over she just trundles off she doesn't get agitated like she used to she's no longer a cage fighter no, she's not. I've, I've taken her out. But she's, she's um, you know, just mellowed. I mean, age may also help with that, but definitely I saw a, a difference. And I know Caroline talks about it as well from a, a behaviorist, doesn't she? But 100%. And we know full well that the way the protein is absorbed by a dog from ultra-processed carbohydrate meals versus a natural, an all-natural raw meal is totally different. So what happens is, you know this, Mark, they digest the meat in the same way, the way nature perfected for them. They digest it and they break it down into usable components, usable amino acids. But when they get it in powder form, whether it's these hypoallergenic bags of basically powdered uh, protein, which is added in or poor quality or denatured or whichever, it creates super spike in what's known as an excitatory neurotransmitter. And that makes them really agitated. It's like giving your kids a load of fizzy drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just not good for them. We've seen consistently. I mean, I've lose how many, how many meals have we served now? It's something ridiculous. Uh, I think we're close to 18 million or something like that. 18 million meals, the consistent mm -hmm. thing. Everybody says is, Oh, I was a bit worried it would make my dog aggressive. And everybody's saying my dog. I don't see that anymore, company. funny enough. And I think that's because peer review or uh, I guess customer reviews or people going out there just saying, I just don't see that. I don't see all the things that they predicted that would happen when you feed your dog raw, you know? So, yeah, you're, you're right. We, you know, it's, there's just so many people now there who are feeding raw that it's just validated the whole, the whole thing, all these myths that, that came out. Oh. So, uh, so Rowan, in, in terms of other things, obviously we've got the, the superfood enriched. What other things would you recommend? Uh, I know there are a few things that I do, but what other things would you recommend um, to help senior dogs? Right. Well, I've got two instantly. And whether it was superfood enriched or any other uh, raw food the single best thing you can do for any senior dog and it doesn't matter what age they're on is get them on to a healthy complete raw diet immediately uh, th that's just not my opinion that's the opinion of lots of vets and experts I've interviewed not just in the UK but around the world they all agree with that it's a healthier form of protein it's not being denatured by cooking. It provides all the underlying building blocks needed for health and immune function. So that's number one. Now, I didn't realize this, but one thing that came out of interviewing uh, some of the vets was they consider aging, the number one thing to look out for is actually dental health. Mm. Now, dental health why? Because it's linked to so many other issues, whether it's heart disease, pancreatitis, brain fog, all of these things in your dog. So the best thing you can do is feed raw. Um, why? Because it's low in sugars, so it's better for dental health. Give them a raw meaty bone because it's not just good for dental health, it's good for mental health. But also that teeth prebiotic that we have is outstanding. So if I was to say, okay, I've got a senior dog, what are the two obvious things I would do? That would be 
first of all, superfood enriched, and next, ensure that they're regularly getting that teeth prebiotic. What about you, Mark? Um, yeah, so the other things I throw, I, I put in with trans food is I, uh, uh, and I know we're going to bring some in, I, I bring some digestive enzymes in. Yeah. Uh, just to help uh, digest, because I think, as you've just said to me on many occasions, that as you get older, you're, you you don't have the same amount of digestive enzymes. And I think just briefly, hey, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to try and explain it, okay? In, in Geordie Scotty language. Uh, so I think uh, it, it basically digestive enzymes help break down the food over time. We don't produce as much as we did. So by putting digestive enzymes on the food, you're basically helping the body digest that food, which in turn helps the body get the nutrients out of the, out of the food as it goes through the digestive system. 100%. And you know, a cheeky thing you can do to biohack that and improve your dog's digestion Go on. is give them a couple of spoonfuls of bone broth before they eat the more raw meal. Okay, the bone broth, right, interesting. Why? Because that primes the pump. What it does is the dog smells all of these things. It goes, it's like Pavlov's dog. It goes, oh, uh, digestive okay. process. Also, it actually gives the dog um underlying building blocks in a really accessible form for them to start making digestive enzymes and ah, gastric juices yeah. yeah exactly and it goes oh wow it's dinner time it smells all of this it's like so there's lots of benefits to bone broth but one is it improves your dog's digestion and its ability to digest and in fact brendan sometimes when he's moving older dogs onto raw he will give them a couple of days of bone broth as a transition. So if I do that with bacon, cook some bacon, will that do the same to me? They get my digestive. Gym. Totally. Totally. I'm not it's... sure what it's going to do to your body comps. I know, but gee, it's, that's just like torture to me, especially when I'm on a diet. I mean. Oh, oh. <laughs> anyway, that's my bacon face. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I, I think, you know, for me, uh, I'm trying to think um, what else. I sometimes put, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, uh, things, uh, well, okay, so the other thing with bone broth, it's got things in which are great for the, 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 the bones. Is that right? For the uh, joints? 100% it's got collagen basically in it. So it's got all the underlying amino acids. It's got glycine, uh, it's got glucosamine, so that the body, you're basically rocking up to your dog and you're saying, hey, here are all the building blocks you need in a really accessible format for you to be able to repair things. And the key part of that, as I know we've talked a lot, is repairing the dog's guts and improving the digestion. So they are then empowered to do that themselves, as in to better digest it. Excellent. So I think that's our main points, isn't it? I mean, do you want to just do a re good re uh, recap? Ron, you well, great your recaps. Should, should we, before we even go on to see recap, yeah. should we uh, maybe just look at the key points to look out for with a senior dog mm -hmm. and how raw food helps them? Yeah, definitely. Or have you got some bacon on the grill that you need no, to No, no, my, 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 no, I've been even thinking about it, man. Bacon, puppy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think you mentioned a really good one, which is avoiding over-exercise because of the arthritis issue. But I think by far the number one issue facing dogs at the moment is obesity and dental health. So we've got arthritis, we've got obesity, we've got dental health. There's some cognitive dysfunction, which means they don't think as well. And that's obviously linked to both dental health and excess sugars as well. Um, I, and then just generally, you know, other joint and skeletal issues through wear and tear. So by feeding raw food, you're going to help them optimize the weight. You're going to help lower any dental health issues. You can feed them teeth, uh, which is that prebiotic, some really good bone broth to help them digest and just avoid over-exercising them. Maybe, you know, treat them to a little massage, a bit like a Kobe beef. And uh, uh, ch chill out a little bit. The one last thing I want to bring up then is, which I realise I see with Trin now, is I don't feed it as as much as I did because uh -huh. it's not as active. 
Um, so you can adjust the feeding, but also uh, I don't feed her twice a day now. Quite often I only feed her once a day. So she has she has fasting for almost, you know, for, you know, 18 to 24 hours. And she and she just doesn't eat it in the morning anymore. And she just eats in the evening. So she's kind of self-selected on that. It's really interesting because a lot of people talk about um, – <clears throat> just how senior dogs lead need lots more protein and i personally don't think they do i think it's that the protein that being exposed to hasn't been sufficiently good quality for them to absorb and i think when it's okay. put in uh, more food you, and, you've and, got and along with, covered so and, and along with the digestive enzymes so yeah, they absorb bone broth. and bone broth yeah yeah so those all things help so yeah, reduce it a little bit, and also maybe just move to one day. And it's it's obviously it's counterintuitive to think how can fasting help with longevity, but there's so much research into fasting. We know it's great for humans. We know that the animals in the wild do it, especially if a dog or oh, sorry a wolf's ill, and I'm sure dogs out there as well are ill. They'll naturally fast because it allows the body the body to heal. So yeah. I think all these things are coming out, and and it's. No one's going to spend, you know, millions and millions on researching this for dogs because why would they? But we know we've done it in humans, so we, we have to take a certain view in it, don't we? Well, that conference we attended, the number one takeaway um, or the two takeaways from Dr. Barbara Royal, you know, who uh, was on Pet Fooled, who's mm -hmm. the Netflix yes, yes. superstar vet, she said was feed your dog once a day. Um, except if it's one of those super small breeds or the real, but feed your dog once a day and ensure that they're fed a raw meal if you want your dog to live a long and happy life. Bingo. Simple as. Kapow. Right. Well, thank you, Rob. Okay. Well, Mark, thanks for having me on and thanks for taking time out of your busy CEO schedule. It's more than a pleasure. It's nice to get out of it. Cool. And, uh, thanks everyone uh appreciate it as always if you could like us on our itunes and all the other places that you get our podcasts our videos we've got a youtube channel we've got lots of videos with rowan interviewing lots of spectacular um guests uh and also let us know what else you would like us to cover in the future um it's always good to hear from yourselves on and ideas that you would like to hear from us um that would be uh that would be wonderful awesome okay well thank you everybody. Thanks, everyone. peace out Please feel free to share it. Let's make it all go around. Yeah.